take two. As it turns out, uh, the first time I attempted to record this video, it wasn't even recording, so I was just blabbering to myself for a few minutes, so that the recording overlay wasn't up, and then realised I've just been wasting my time. Anyway, it is November the 5th of 2022, I'm still on 2013, and this is just another update for my most recent grinding spot, and how, how I'm getting on with that. Now, you might notice that this is very similar to the grinding spot I mentioned before, it's the Feral Rivals. You've got these two fighting each other and they give you 6,600 CP. Um, and considering that Vladislaus gave me, was it 32,000? This seems like quite a downgrade from that. But I am back here for a reason and I will go into those reasons for just a moment. Also, I can't help but notice uh, the area's looking a lot more yellow. A lot more yellow these days. Maybe it's just... I don't know, maybe it's to do with the mission I've got active. I don't know, maybe it's just random. Either way. Uh, first thing, I just want to mention, like, I really like the Arkel step, you know. I really like this music. I really like the big open field, which in most games... Oh, little cheeky cactor in the back there. <laughs> um... Yeah, most games I'm not really bothered about this whole like, oh, you're entering a big open world. But I think uh, it's it's contextual. I think in this game, you've been conditioned to run down so many corridors that when you do approach something like this, it feels extra grand in a way, in, a, in its own way. But I do really like the music. Anyway, so what's different? Uh, you can see I've got a chocolate ball there. But what is different? this time round is that, well, the situation's changed. If I look at my missions, you can see that I have completed a lot more of the missions, most notably Mission 55, which is the Neo Chew. And the Neo Chew will give you a piece of equipment that I will go into in a moment that is very helpful for this. Uh, but the Neo Chew, uh, the way to defeat the Neo Chew, or one way to defeat the Neo Chew, Neo Chew is by using uh, Vanille as your leader because she can use Saboteur. Her unique ability is Death. And that will just kill an enemy outright but with a very low percentage chance. So I think it's something like 1%. If you can debuff Neo Chew, it will increase that slightly. And I think the only debuff you can get onto it is Imperil. So just spam Imperil and and then just spam death and it might take a few battles uh, it might take a while it could take ages it took me thankfully not too many battles maybe three or four I think uh, to be able to kill it but you'd also want to have um, in your paradigm deck in your party lineup you would want Saz is it Saz no hope and either fang or snow so Hope will just there to heal because he's he's the main medic, and these two can just defend themselves with the sentinel ability and the sentinel roll either. Uh, so yeah, that's just a case of just keep trying and you'll eventually do it, and that way you'll get the growth egg. And what's special about the growth egg? I've got a good to know here, is that it doubles your CP. So. These guys here, these feral rivals, who did give me 6,600 before, now give me. One, no, not 100. <laughs> um, th what is it? 13,200, that's right. So they gave me. that. The fight against those gives me 13,200. Now, the fight against Vladislaus gave me 32,000, so that seems like quite a downgrade. But it's not, and I'll go into why in just a moment. But first of all, uh, let's go into uh, how I'm doing with my Crystarium because I'm at the point now where you can see every character has level 5 of all their primary roles. So I'm now just working on the on the secondary roles. So if you have a look at these last few stages, so magic plus 40, HP plus 250 for 60,000 and I'm getting a little bit of lag here. Let's go to Lightning Sentinel, one of her secondary roles. 
you can see when we get to the top. It's so... Okay, first of all, I just want to comment. Right, this whole thing about... These... Okay, these rings. Each ring is meant to represent, like, a Crystarium expansion. But you don't actually unlock the secondary rolls until chapter 10. So... Um... Having so many rings, it's like... Well, you unlock the secondary rolls, then you've unlocked so many rings. But yeah, this is, like, the second last one where you get all these. And then, at the top, you get these, which, uh, as you can see, magic plus 10 for 60,000, strength plus 9 for 60,000, HP plus 100. So, when you actually get to the point where you're working on the secondary rolls, these stats give you real diminishing returns. The value is not great. I mean, Snow, Snow can get like 500 HP for 60, I mean, I suppose... HP is one of his main things, but we can get 500 for HP for that price, whereas Lightning here is only getting 100 for that same price. Um, so grinding for CP uh, really doesn't matter as much these days, so I'm not really going to be doing that now, I don't think. I don't think I'm going to be doing that anymore. I think I'm just going to be moving on. So, uh, But I will be getting CP anyway, because the Adamantoises and the adamant tortoises and whatever variations you need to farm them for the platinum ingots and the trapezohedrons so you can sell the ingots for money and the traps can be used to upgrade each character's weapon to its final form which will not aside from being powerful will give each character their sixth atb slot yeah because uh each ATB slot is increased a different way, and the last way that you do it for each character is by getting their, uh, equipping their ultimate weapon. Uh, so that's something I'm going to be needing to do. Besides, there's a achievement. There's an achievement for it. So uh, let's actually get to what I'm actually, I've actually been doing, which I won't be doing anymore because I'm finishing. But let's have a look at uh, the fight here. So. We've got the uh, the feral the feral rivals as I'm calling them, and my party that I'm using is Lightning, Snow, and Fang. And if we have a look at our paradigms, you will see very simple, just two Cerberus paradigms: Commando, 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 and Commando, Commando, Commando. Now, uh, this makes the fight very quick and very easy because I am at the point now, and I have been at this point for quite a while uh, that these these guys will just go down like instantly and commandos are just straight up dealing damage you don't need to worry because sorry a bit of a sore throat just because they're saga gorge because you're guaranteed a preemptive strike you don't need to worry so much about using ravager to lower their defences. So you could just start on Commando. Another good thing with Commandos is that Commandos don't take orders so much as that they, no, they don't follow orders as much as they make orders in the sense that if you're playing with a Commando and two Ravagers then those Ravagers will will target whoever the Commando is targeting but Commandos will just, will just have at it. They'll just start attacking whoever. So and that's good because we want to sort of spread the damage out evenly. So what will happen is uh, Lightning and Snow will attack the Behemoth King. Light, uh, Fang will attack the other guy with the name I don't know how to pronounce or I don't even know what it is. And the Behemoth King will die in a few, in a couple rounds. A few hits rather. And, and then you'll take out the, the last guy. Um, the reason I've got two of these is because when you're in the air, because Fang, uh, not Fang, Lightning will launch launch it into the air, and when it, when you're falling, you can do a paradigm shift, which may refill your ATB, and since you're doing it in the air, you don't get the full animation, because usually in a battle, when you paradigm shift for the first time, uh, each the animation is each character's paradigm shifts like on their own and then every other paradigm shift after that is just all at once. 
So being in the air sort of bypasses that. Sometimes you don't need a paradigm shift in the air because lightning will still have an attack left. Uh, so at worst the battle will take like 14 seconds and at best it'll take 8 seconds. So let's have a look. Right, attack Behemoth King. Lightning and snow. Oh, and then Paradigm Shift. I land. And there you go. I mean, what determines, what alters the... The amount of... Uh, time it takes uh, is to do with how well Fang does against that... The, the guy on the ground. Because sometimes you can land and then, like, as you've landed, Fang's just taking care of it. So I suppose there's like a little bit of randomness there, but we're talking a variation between... Oh, I didn't walk up far enough. We're talking a variation between... Like, what is it? Eight seconds and... Like, 13, 14 seconds at most. So it's only a couple seconds. And considering that the vast majority of... Yeah, the, the majority of the time isn't actually spent battling, it's just running away from it to despawn. So... So yeah, the point is is that these guys here are actually now really weak to where the, the CP wouldn't normally be worth it. Oh, see, their lightning's got an attack in still. So the CP wouldn't normally be worth it, but the fact that the, the fight is just so quick... That's what makes it worth it. And just like that, with just two fights, I've gained 26,000 CP. 26,400 for each character. Now, I'm not going to be doing this anymore because, like I said, grinding the, the CP isn't really much worth it now. We'll see if I start building the saboteur. Just spend a few pounds here. We've got 10 HP, 4 strength, 10 HP, yeah. So, like, in that process, we got, from those two battles, we got, uh, it's like 20 HP or something? Or is it more than that? Am I... I think it's about 20. Well, either way, if it was, tw like, 20 HP... I mean, look, that takes her from 16,240 to 16,260. So, yeah, it's really, we're really, really are at the point where uh, diminishing returns is kicking in. Although, I wonder if, you know what, I'm just curious. So, let's go to, I mean, this could take a while. So, 60,000, let's do strength. So, 60,000 for 40. Or oh, 30,000, well, 30,000 for 40. Because I know we've got, like, diminishing... I think we've got, like, overall diminishing returns. I'm trying to figure out, just out of curiosity... Um, cause I think, do you level up to gain stats faster? I mean... Yeah, 8 for 740. I mean, not that it really matters, because the things with such these low levels on the primary rolls, I guess you're going to have to level these up early anyway, so it's not really a part of the equation. But, yeah, I mean, these are valuable. Uh, uh, like, relatively speaking, you level up faster down here, in terms of CP per stat, than you do higher up. Um, but of course you need them anyway. But say if I go to Sentinel. Yeah, this is just me being curious. So, so 3,000 for 10 HP. I think it is about the same. Yeah, I think these level up linear linearly, at least relative to CP cost. I mean, that's a bit more effective, I suppose. Well, maybe not. And it seems to jump around a bit. Yeah, 
yeah, I mean, HP plus 30 for 30,000. These are definitely diminishing returns here. But then when you get to the final one, they become more valuable again. So maybe... Maybe for the secondary rolls it's more valuable to focus on one at a time and try and get that maxed. Interesting. Maybe, I don't know. I don't know. It's very it's very hit or miss, I think. Anyway, uh, I've been rambling for a bit, so... Yeah. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.